Welcome to the Her Vibe is Pretty podcast, where you'll be guided on how to step up into your evolved woman, design your dream life, and start living it. Let's get vibey. Hey, hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Her Vibe is Pretty. We are so happy to have you here. Sarah, let's get started by chatting about what you're feeling high vibe about today. I am feeling high vibe right now in real time because I just officially booked my one-way flights from the United States to Portugal in Europe yay! and my Airbnb. And yeah, I am really excited. So I'm guessing by the time you guys listen to this, I'll probably already be there. So be sure to stay up to date with my travels on my Instagram. But as of today, I booked it last night and it feels so freeing and so expansive. And I just have this whole list already of things that I want to do and see and books I want to read. And I'm just going to make it really about finding me and finding myself. And again, for the maybe third or fourth time, like on my personal development journey, I feel like I definitely, there's always like a next level. And I I've known for a while, I've been like approaching another version of me and it's just all starting to really land. So I'm super excited to just do some deep self exploration. And of course, like actual exploration of the world, because of course I'm going to travel a lot while I'm over there as well, but I'm excited. I've lived in Europe twice, once in Prague, once in Madrid. So Czech Republic and Spain, and I've actually never been to Portugal, which is kind of crazy. I've been to a lot of countries over in Europe and Spain is connected to Portugal. So it's shocking that I haven't been there, but I haven't. And I've heard nothing but amazing things. I'm pumped. It's like, did you ever watch the movie or read the book, Eat, Pray, Love? I don't think I did. Oh, it is. I I probably have seen the movie. Is it Portugal based? No, no, no. She goes to, um, the story itself isn't, but she goes on this like really long trip. Um, it's about Elizabeth Gilbert. I think that's her name. Yeah. Elizabeth Gilbert. She wrote big magic. Have you read that book? No, but I've heard of it. One of our listeners actually told me to read it. Eat, Eat, Pray, Love is so good. It's about her. Um, she go is going through a divorce and she basically like gets this book deal to like write this book about her travels. And so she goes to Italy, uh, India and eat, pray, love. I forget where's the last place that she goes. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to watch it. I feel like I probably have seen it, but I'm going to rewatch it. Oh, Julia Roberts is like the main character Mm -hmm. and, and I just love her. So Mm -hmm. you're giving me very like eat, pray, love vibes with your trip about like doing a trip for you. Yeah. Like do some soul searching and soul discovery and like self-love and all the things. And yeah, I've been wanting to write a book. Maybe I'll start it now. Gosh, freaking do it. Do it. I like, I'm (laughs) excited. I'm excited to live through your travels. (laughs) I don't have any trips booked currently. (laughs) I've, I feel that because I totally, love living through other people's travels. That's what I do right now when I'm not traveling is I live through other people's stories and it lights me up. And so I'm excited to be the one actually creating those vibey, gorgeous stories. And so, all right, fill us in on what's making you feel high vibe. Yeah, I am feeling really high vibe because this last weekend, Jake went hunting. So Ava and I uh, took a little mini trip over to my parents' house, which they live on like the opposite side of the state as I do. So it is, it does feel like a getaway when I go over there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I completely unplugged. I worked for maybe a total of an hour one day, Mm -hmm. um, but it felt really good to have like four legit days to slow down and disconnect and spend some really good quality time with my mom and dad. I got to visit my aunt a little bit while I was there. Obviously Ava was with us all the time. So yeah, it's kind of a low key thing. I'm high vibe about, but I feel very refreshed and recharged. Good. So that's so nice. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. And so I also, while I was there, got some time to do some reading. And so the book I'm reading is actually what inspired the topic that we're going to talk about today. Um, So I'm reading this book called The Book of Joy. I mentioned this uh, several podcasts back. I don't remember exactly which episode, but I've been slowly making my way through this book about creating lasting joy in your everyday life 
in an ever-changing world, which, Mm -hmm. hello, that's what we're all living in right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the major points that they make, like one of the first big categories of discussion is about shifting your perspective in situations. And so Sarah and I were talking about it and it was like, dang, let's just do an episode on this because I feel like there are so many good examples. And I think it'll just be really fun for us to dive in deeper into that specific thing Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to creating more joy in your everyday life. Yeah. This is big. Like this is really, really big. And it's funny because when Mary threw this idea out to me today, I was like, absolutely. Because literally just today. So the day we are recording this shifting perspective has come up four times in my life. And I'm going to share all those four examples because they're all very different and all very profound. But I think for me and Mary, I want to know for you too, when this started to happen, I learned the value of shifting perspective, probably pretty early on in my personal development journey. And I think that the biggest quote that really reminds me to shift perspective is everything's happening for me. Ooh. Okay. So can I add the one I thought you were going to say, but the one that comes to mind for me is there's always a silver lining. Yes. That too. Or like this or something better, which I think we've talked about. We've definitely talked about all those quotes at some point on the show, but everything's happening for me. Mm -hmm. It that's literally every time something happens where the mind wants to be upset, the mind wants to spiral. The mind wants to make the situation mean something about me, who I am, what my life is or will be not saying I, I bypass those feelings. I feel the feels and it's happening for me always reminds me to change my perspective or invites me into it, invites me into, is there any other way you could potentially see this to use this? What seems to be a very negative shitty situation for your further growth and expansion. Totally. And you've, you've reminded me this. I think another way of saying it is like, where's the lesson? Yeah. Where's the lesson in the situation. And Mm -hmm. on some of my like shitty bad days, Sarah, you're the one that reminds me of that. And, and it is like, you have to, you have to like consciously do it though. I feel like for most people, I'm sure not everyone, our Mm -hmm. mind doesn't automatically, when something bad happens, our mind doesn't automatically just go there. It's very easy to dwell and be the victim and like feel like shit. And again, it doesn't mean you don't go through those feelings, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. You you have a choice. You have a choice. Exactly. It's a choice. And so also with what the world is going through right now, I feel like this is very, very relevant. Now, when this episode drops, who knows where we'll all be at with this, but the C word, I see a lot of people calling it the C word. (laughs) I feel like, (laughs) why is that? I think, okay. So my perspective on calling it the C word is what I've noticed is that if you write the word COVID in your Instagram post, all the CDC stuff pops up and it's just like distracting. So I actually wrote a post about it last week because I got COVID again a couple weeks ago. And so I wrote it like the C word. I didn't put the C word, but I put C star. Wait. Yeah. V I D or something like that. And so like my, like, why are people calling it the C word? (laughs) Do we know? What's your guess? Um, because it's kind of similar to the other C word that everyone's probably thinking of. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even, once again, <laughs> perspective, right? I'm over here like, oh, it's a social media thing. And then it's like, oh no, it's so similar to the other C word. <laughs> Amazing. So the C word COVID, this is what our world is going through right now. And perspective is a big thing here because, okay. So there is of course a lot of pain and a lot of shitty things that are being created because of COVID and not, not just COVID, like our world right now is going through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and of course this is keeping it pretty basic. I mean, we could go really deep into how I personally feel about this and shifting perspective, but there really are two different ways to look at what's happening in the world. You either look from a very fear based place, the world's falling apart humans suck. We all suck. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. This is nothing but bad. Earth is awful. Living is horrible. 
we have to live in fear forever. We're being ruined. You either look from that perspective or you look from the perspective, which is the one that I like to give my attention to of sometimes we have to break down to break through. So like systems need to crumble in order to rebuild something more beautiful that serves everybody Mm -hmm. there. Like you can look from the perspective of good is coming from this. People are waking up. So that's like with COVID the past, it's been going on for like two years at this point. I've really realized that it's inviting a lot of people to start getting into personal development, self-help, finding themselves, finding what they want, finding what they desire. It's Mm -hmm. really inviting people up into a higher version of themselves that they may not ever have realized had they not been quarantined for X amount of days or like gone through the struggle that they've gone through because of COVID. I feel like there were so many stories of people who lost their jobs Mm -hmm. and they're the people that had that more negative mindset about it, which again, losing your job doesn't feel good. I've been fired before. It feels Mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, lost their job and just, you know, didn't do anything about it and just kind of kept keeping on that negative storyline about what's happening to the world and society and themselves. And, you know, again, I'm not saying I like, it's a good thing to get fired, but on the other side perspective, you guys, there are so many people that I've discovered during yeah. COVID and quarantine that had a lot of free time. So they used that time to yep. learn new skills, to build yeah. a business, to start something that they never had the time for before yeah. because they had the time now. Totally. And more often than not, and I'm sure there's stories that maybe things did fail or didn't work out, but I've heard so many success stories from people that are like, I never would have done this right. if I wasn't like pushed off that yeah. cliff. And had exactly. It. And same with the work from home thing. A lot of people are forced to work from home. There are so many companies that would have never allowed that. And now there are so many people who are way happier working from home and they would have never realized that if it hadn't happened. So when we talk about perspective, I mean, that's like the biggest one that's active for us in our world today. And I'm sure that there are probably by the time this comes out, whether it's still happening or not, there's going to be something else. Like it's all about perspective. Like which perspective are you going to give into? Because that's going to determine your reality. So I want to give some more examples. Some yeah, what happened to you today? Tell me. Oh my God. So, so, and it's not, I'm not, I'm going to keep their privacy, but I've actually coached three people through this today. And then I was on a call with one of my mentors and it came up again. So the first one is one of my clients is going through a breakup and I I've been through what she's going through and I know a lot of us have, so she's going through a breakup and basically ties aren't cut. The, her ex is still communicating to her. And sometimes that's in a way that's nice. And sometimes it's not so nice for the most part, it's not so nice. And it's just creating a lot of energetic chaos and, you know, shitty feelings. And so her and I were talking about perspective today and talking about how she has the choice. She can either view the things that he's saying to her as like, this means something about me because he's saying these words to me because he is treating me like this. It must mean that I'm not enough, that I'm shitty, that I was a shitty girlfriend, that I wasn't there for him. Like it, it, it must mean something about me or she can look from the perspective of hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. He is hurting and he doesn't know how to feel that to heal it. So he's projecting it onto me. This is a test from the universe, seeing if I'm actually serious because I know I'm not good for him. I know he's not good for me, at least not at this point in our life. So I can see this from the perspective of this is the universe. This is God testing me to see how serious I am about my growth. Cause she recently started a personal development journey you have two different perspectives. And so as her and I are having this conversation, she's like, oh yeah, yeah. And so she started to shift into that higher perspective Mm -hmm. and she feels so much lighter and so much more confident moving forward and what's going to go on next with their relationship now. Whereas earlier when we had first started talking about it, she was really distraught. Wow. That's such a realistic I mean, we've all been in those situations, whether it's a friendship or like more of a partner romantic relationship, or even with our families, Mm -hmm. we take the things that they say to us and the way that they treat us 
as like a reflection of us when it's actually just a reflection of them. For sure. But you need to make that perspective shift. Right. And And what story are you telling yourself about the things that are happening to you in that situation? Exactly. So the next one kind of goes along with like the other people. I have another client who is very like she's still somewhat surrounded by these people who used to be her friends and now okay so this situation I'm about to share it does have to do with what's happening in the world the c world the c word -word. and so basically this client and her old friends have very different perspectives on the c word and so she was seeing the things that they were posting and the things that they're saying. And she was letting them hurt her and mean something about her and who she's going to serve in the world, who she's serving now, who she's serving in the future. Cause she's starting a business. And she was like looking at them as like, you guys, like, I can't believe you're talking like this. I can't believe you're saying these kind of things. These things are so hurtful to so many people. I can't believe you're putting them out there. Just like looking at it from a very negative connotation. And then once we started talking about it, I'm like, what if you could see those people through the eyes of source, through the eyes of God, through the eyes of compassion, realizing that like, they don't have the intuitive connection that you have yet. And that's clear because if they did have the intuitive connection, they wouldn't be talking the way that they are on social media right now, because not saying that they don't have a right to their opinion and that their opinion's wrong. Like, no, we all have a right to our own opinion and it's valid the way that we share our opinion. It really like, it, and just look around on social media, look at other people, like look at people speaking their truth. You can tell when somebody's speaking their truth from a very wise, passionate, loving, I'm so passionate about this topic. And I want, I want to influence people to see it the way that I see it, because I think it's for the betterment of the world, you can tell when somebody's coming from that place mm-hmm. versus when somebody is coming from this egoic, disconnected, influenced, closed-minded place. Absolutely. So she was like her friends, her old friends, I should say, are coming from this very influenced, negative, closed-minded place, very egoic place. And that's how she was viewing it. And I'm like, well, what if you looked at them through the eyes of compassion instead feeling bad that they haven't gotten the chance yet to connect to their soul, to connect to their truth, to connect to their body, to connect to their innate wisdom. Like, could you see it through the eyes? Could you literally just start seeing them through the eyes of God? And she was like, Oh my, like wake up call. Or sometimes I'll invite clients to see others as their inner children. Like somebody who maybe you're in a tiff with, or somebody who said something hurtful or saying things hurtful. Can you see them? as their inner children. Like, can you just take a moment to see their inner child inside that's hurting, that's wounded, that's scared, that's afraid, that's worried, whatever it is that in itself can help you shift your perspective so massively on the things people do say and how they act. Could you imagine the world we would live in if everyone treated people like that? Mm -hmm. We would be like beyond anything we could even imagine. Yeah. So much more love and understanding and compassion for each other. And I, and I really do think that this stuff with COVID is like, it's an invitation for all of us to step up into that. And even though there's a lot of disconnect being created and a lot of fights and arguments and whatnot, I think there are also at the same time, a lot of people who are using this as an opportunity to connect to the part of them that has the ability to see through the eyes of God source whatever you believe in and through the eyes of compassion and love. Exactly. That's such a big one. And I want to like, I want you guys to like write that one down because I think that alone, if you like had one takeaway and Mm -hmm. that was it, that will shift your perspective in so many, what could be potentially bad negative experiences that could spiral and get even worse. If you keep like just giving into that negative energy Mm -hmm. where you can be the person, like you can be the change in that situation by you taking that moment to pause and shift your perspective. Exactly. And I know for me, like that, that was a big thing for yoga. Like Mm -hmm. yoga helped me in my relationships because it gave me that space. Mm -hmm. 
instead of being very reactive to someone or something or something that happens to me, yeah. taking that moment to pause and breathe and like choose how I want to move forward in the situation. Like it literally changed things with Jake and I, it was changing things with people like coworkers of mine, like even mm-hmm. the ones that I freaking didn't like and wanted nothing to do with. But when I had to deal with them, coming from that more like calm centered place mm-hmm. made it so much better for everyone involved. Yeah, totally. I love it. So those are like the biggest ones. And then just some very simple, like more simple, basic ones that I have that once again happened today, I think business owners are probably going to resonate more with this, but I know all of you will find some, some value in this. So one of those clients as well was, um, facilitating a virtual session for four people. There were four people and she was facilitating breathwork for these four people. And one of the four sat up halfway through the session and clicked a button and left the call, like literally midway through breathwork. And so, and something similar has happened to me before when facilitating breathwork. And so we were just chatting about once again, perspective you have two choices. You can see it from, they must've hated the session. I must've said something wrong. They must've not liked what I was doing or how I was facilitating. And therefore they left, or you could look from the perspective of maybe they got a text or a call halfway through the session that alerted them. And it looked important. So they had to hurry up and leave. Right. Or maybe they got like a little ding on their computer, telling them that their computer was dying, which took them out of the breath work. They saw it was dying and then they had to leave and go find their charger. And then maybe they couldn't find it. Like there are literally infinite possibilities that could have happened. And so this goes along with the same thing. So I was on a live session with one of my mentors and there were 555 people on the live call at one point it was Instagram live. And so there are 555 people on the call and then all of a sudden there was like 475. And so this is the last time perspective was brought up today in my life. And I feel like when things are brought up time and time and time again, it's a message. So I'm going to have to do my own journaling tonight on like, why is the universe sending me so much perspective stuff? Like right now, like I'm coaching on shifting perspective. Where am I, where do I get to shift it more? Cause we all, all have opportunities always to shift on something. So anyway, there were like 475 people and she's like, it's all about So she was talking about the quantum field and she's like playing in the quantum field, playing with quantum, meaning shifting your reality really quickly is like the easiest way to sum up quantum. We have an episode on it. If you haven't listened to it yet, you can go back and listen, but she was like playing in the quantum is all about shifting perspective. I could easily, and I I've been, I've done this before too, going live. She's like, I could easily sit here and be like, oh, 50 people left. They must not like what I'm saying or more than that, 75 people left. They must not like what I'm saying. They must be hating this live call. I'm not good at what I do because so many people are leaving in such a short amount of time. You could look from that perspective or you could shift it and be like, all right, people have lives. Not everybody can sit here for an hour in the middle of the day watching me on live. People have lives. They have to go tend to their work and to their family. Like they popped on for a little bit and that's what matters. They'll watch the replay. Like life happens and there aren't going to be 555 people always who are going to be able to sit there for an hour long live. And it's like that perspective right there changes everything. Yeah. And focus on the people that are there. Exactly. Are you going to give your attention to the 50, 75 people that had to leave for a million different reasons? I mean, who knows? You can't Like, Mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on with them in their life or like what they were doing. And then it's like, that can take, you can like give your energy to those people that aren't even there. Or are you going to give your full blown energy into the people that are showing up for you right? and are there? Well, and Mary, I also think that a really big thing that can help you guys with this. And I want to hear your thoughts on this too, as, as well, Mary, but put yourself in the shoes of whatever, like on the opposite end. So what I mean by that is today, or like, let's say you were in, in my mentor's shoes today. Let's say you're doing a life. Let's say you are an entrepreneur and you're doing a life, or maybe, I don't know, maybe like you're hosting a business meeting or something and you have the situation happen. 
when you're, so this is just like a tip, I guess you could say on actually following through with shifting your perspective. Cause it's not always the easiest thing to do. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. So for me, when we're reflecting on this situation, I think of myself in the way that I watch lives. So when I see that somebody's live that I love, sometimes I'll pop on and I'm like, Ooh, this is super juicy, but I'm working right now. So I don't want to watch this live while I'm working because when I watch this live, I want to be super present. So therefore I'm going to get off the live and I'm going to go back and watch the replay later. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I hop on the live with one of my mentors and I get a phone call, which interrupts the live. And then I answer it. And then I like, forget about it. So in like with literally every situation that you're trying to shift your perspective on, see if you can put yourself in the other person's shoes and like, remember how you act as a human doing that same thing, like leaving a breathwork call halfway through or popping off of a live randomly or whatever it is. I mean, I could sit here and go through so many examples. The other thing that is a major piece to this is becoming aware of where your mind automatically goes. Mm -hmm. And meditation is a really good tool to practice that. Mm -hmm. But one of the Instagram posts that like went viral, that's one that literally changed my life when I read it and stumbled across it. Cause it was early when I started my business is, uh, it says something along the lines of my therapist says that whenever I start to think like, what if it fails? What if this doesn't work? What if I lose it all to start shifting and saying to myself instead, what if it does work? What if I do win? What if it goes even better 10 times what I thought it could go? It's yeah. like, there are two ways that we can think about it. And a lot of times we just default to that like negative, scarce fear mindset instead of automatically defaulting to the abundance, winning, happy, positive outcome of something. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, that was holding me up and stopping me from a lot of business things and going for things because I was so afraid of what would happen. And I started practicing this and it's a practice just like anything else. You guys, you know, it's, it might feel very unnatural at first, but when you start to catch yourself and you become aware of the thoughts that are going through your mind in a situation, take that moment to take a deep breath and, and rewrite that for what you want it to be, or even for fun. Like what would be the complete opposite of what would happen? Exactly. And we literally get to choose. So like, which one do you choose? Do you want to choose the doom and gloom? option yeah. or do you want to choose like the happy go lucky things are going to be awesome option right it takes the it takes equal effort to think what if it works and what if it doesn't work mm-hmm. and i just want to go back to what you said about how we usually default to the what if it doesn't work and what if it fails and i want you guys to remember to have compassion for yourself like don't beat yourself up about going to that negative place instantly because our minds are literally wired to do that from a place of trying to keep us safe and surviving. So just your, just a friendly reminder, the minds are trying to keep us safe and surviving. And that is it. They don't care about our, our expansion. They don't care about growth. They don't care about finding our true selves. They don't care about evolving in life. The mind's job is one thing to keep us surviving on earth, which thankfully we need. So thank you mind for doing that. And we get to allow ourselves to give our minds a break a little bit because the minds work way too hard trying to do that. Therefore always putting us instantly into that negative thought pattern. So we get to really just have compassion for that part of us and also trust that it only does that because it tries to keep us safe. So let's just start bringing awareness to it and choosing to go with what our soul or our higher self would say. So that's another thing you can do too, is like, okay, I'm noticing that this is happening And I would love to think a different thought. So, Hey, of all self, what would you say about this? Like if you're worrying about, I don't know, like launching is on my mind right now, just because I am a business owner and I'm going to launch in a couple of weeks, but when the mind in me, cause it still happens when the mind in me is like, you shouldn't launch this. Who's going to enroll. Nobody's going to sign up for your course. I get to stop myself and dive inward and be like, Hey, of all self, what do you have to say about the course? And she's like, launch that shit, bitch. Like you got this. It's going to be amazing. Exactly. And like, that's the thing is like, we, we hold ourselves back from so many things. There's so many times that it's literally just these stories in our mind that are like the default, which I also, we refer to as like the conditioned mind or like Sarah mentioned in a previous episode, like other people's voices in my own head, Mm -hmm. but we like think it's our own voice. Mm -hmm. And when you can start to slow down the mind and identify these 
and you can rewrite them to what you want them to be. Yeah. It makes such a difference. It's going to add so much more joy and happiness to Mm -hmm. your everyday life. And so an example that came to mind for me, which I say this very lightly, we are starting to maybe talk about getting pregnant again, like in the future. So we're not trying, (laughs) but we would love to have another baby at some point. And I caught myself like thinking of the negative things through my pregnancy. And I like, I feel like I had a pretty good pregnancy experience. I definitely Mm -hmm. had some complications with the pelvic pain, with the diabetes towards the end, Mm -hmm. but all in all, it was really good. And Mm -hmm. I, so like, I had that moment myself where I was like, whoa, girl, like, you know, getting ready to do this again. And I was like, what perspective and energy do I want to bring to that situation when the time comes? Do I want to pretend, like, think about like how uncomfortable I was and how I like couldn't sleep and I was peeing all the time. And I like have to check my blood because I'm most likely going to get, you know, uh, diabetes again on the next one. Or can I remember like how fun it was to like feel the kicks and like watch my body grow and shift and change. Like I found so much more love for myself and love for my body during pregnancy. And Mm -hmm. I really like, I had that moment where I had to catch myself and shift that. And the thing is, like we say before, like the things you focus on, you're going to create more of. So Mm -hmm. if I go into eventually getting pregnant again, and like I said, probably not going to be for like another year or so, like, <laughs> it, cause it is a lot, but we've started to have that conversation. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to be really cautious of like the energy and the vibe and the mindset that I bring to starting and growing our family again. Yeah. And it can be something like that again, something so normal, but we do, we like tell ourselves stories or like I know a big one for me too, is like with traveling, actually, Sarah, you were the one that kind of reminded me of this as well. So like, I was getting so nervous about going to Austin with like, what am I going to do with my breast milk and pumping? And like, how am I going to be able to save enough for her? And like, it just made me like really anxious and stressed about leaving. And I remember Sarah, you were like, there's a lesson in this. Like you're going through this so that you can figure it out. You Mm -hmm. can learn what to do. It's going to give you more freedom and confidence to leave. And it's also going to inspire other people, other moms who are maybe too afraid to go because they don't know how they're going to see you do it. And it'll give them that freedom and that confidence to go. Mm -hmm. And, and that's so true. And I mean, that's like a silly, simple example, but like, how do you choose to look at that? Yeah. No, it's a real example. And you guys coming soon in Mary's mom episode, by the way, like yeah. actually that might even already be out by now. So go check for that, but she's going to give all the deets because it's true. And I love that perspective. And I love the way that you ended up shifting into that and rolling with it. And it worked out, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. It was so like, I feel like, again, this all comes back to that idea of like creating more joy in your everyday life. And that was something because of the perspective that I had, this is hard. How am I going to do this? How am I going to juggle this? Like, I don't know what I'm, you know, where am I going to do this at? Where am I going to pump at? Where am I going to store it? How am I going to keep it cold? Like I was, I was letting myself like, I was ruining the moment where instead I sat down, did a little bit of research, made a plan, figured it all out. It went so smooth and so awesome. And it was amazing. And I did a great job and got it all figured out and was like the milk lady when I came home with like my bags of milk. (laughs) So (laughs) Hashtag milk lady. We still need to make that slut shirt. Hashtag milk lady for real. So yeah, it's all about the perspective. I felt so much more confident. Like I remember walking through, I was so nervous about going through TSA, but I like did my research walked through TSA, like a freaking mom boss was like, Hey, girls got milk. Who do I need to talk to? And it went so well and they helped me and it was amazing. So amazing. I love it. Did I share, actually, did I share the story about when I talked to the TSA agent in Grand Rapids? No, tell us. Okay, quick little tangent. So like, as when I was going through the Grand Rapids airport, which is like a super small airport, you guys, but they like, you can fly international. So we usually fly through there. Um, it was super slow during uh, security. So I walked through and there was a lady and I was like, Hey, I'm going to be coming back with lots of milk. And I read that you can do this. Like, do you have any tips for like getting through, making it smooth? Like, who do I need to talk to? And she was like, 
yes, I am so glad that you are doing this. She's like, good for you for pumping on your trip, making it work and bringing that back for your baby. Your baby's gonna, they need that. That's so oh. good. She's like, I breastfed all my babies and they're so healthy, like all this stuff. She goes, oh my God. Yeah anyone tries to stop you, you talk to their manager. You <laughs> ask to talk to the supervisor. Don't let anyone stop you. Don't let, she went on and on. It was, I felt so good. I felt like I was part of this like secret mom club. And she was like my hype girl. Like, don't let anyone stop you. And good for you for doing that. Like, I'm proud of you, mama. That's the energy we all need in this life. Like, can we yes. all just like shift into the perspective of that TSA agent, please? And thank you. <laughs> I feel like she probably looks for the silver linings and everything and probably looks at the positive perspective with all situations. Right, I love that right. so, much. so I know. I love that. That was so, it just like made That's me. That's cute. And again, this is all you guys, like a situation that I'm not kidding. Like as silly as it sounds was like keeping me up. Like I kept thinking like, what am I going to do? How am I going to figure this out? Yeah. But it's yeah. all about perspective. Um, one other, and this is kind of like a dramatic example, mm-hmm. very dramatic. So especially like all of my true crime people, you're going to like probably know about this, but do you, and Sarah, are you familiar with Amanda Knox? She yeah. was like, yeah, she was like headline after headline after headline, like yeah. was remind like, me of her story though. He was accused of murdering her roommate in Italy. Oh, they were like studying abroad there Whoa. and it wasn't her. This other guy was completely convicted, but like the media, like I remember the name, like I know the name, I guess I didn't ever hear the story. Cause I didn't know that, but I know the name cause it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. So That's I just listened to, um, crime junkies, which is like my favorite, um, true crime podcast. Crime junkies has an episode about, um, Meredith Kircher is the roommate that was murdered. Mm. And there's also like many clips cause they interviewed Amanda Knox, but mm. at the end of the interview, um, so that's a good one just to listen to if you guys are interested in true crime, crime junkies. But at the end of the interview, that's like, was one of the things that planted the let's talk about perspective, because she was saying like, She's like, listen, I was in prison for four years. I was like crucified by all news outlets. Like I thought once I got out, like I was out and I like my life was going to start, but absolutely not. As soon as I got home, she was like, there were paparazzis. Like I couldn't know everyone knew me as this like terrible person that the media painted me out to be. Like she was like, it was very, very rough. But at, at the end, she was talking about perspective and she was like, as shitty as it was to go through everything that I went through in this situation, she was like, I still had the chance to come back and create a life for myself where mm-hmm. my friend and my roommate Meredith, like, doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Like, she didn't get that at all. And she um, like, went into way more depth about it. I like, wish I could remember more of the details, but that really hit me where I was like, this is someone, I mean, you want to talk about being in a bad situation, mm-hmm. like being accused, wrongfully accused of, mm-hmm a murder, um, having to go through the legal system in a country that isn't your home country, doesn't speak the language that you, Wait, speak. she was in prison in Italy. Yeah. She was like, and I'm pretty sure it was for like four years. Oh, yeah, she, it was insane. And like, I don't, you guys like, don't quote me on the facts of this case. Like I, I don't know the actual details. Cause it was more about like her, they like did a really good job focusing on like the victim and like making the story about them versus like the murder. You know how like murders get like the light, you know, they like become famous yeah. and, and yeah. whatnot. And it's like, okay, well, what about all the people that they like took their life away? Right. So yeah, I was just really blown away by how, and she like rattled off like a bunch of different perspective pieces of like, wow, it sucks. But like, I had this opportunity to like t- retell my story, rebuild my life, like come to this place, like forgive the people that you know, wronged her and we're putting her through this freaking circus of like a legal experience. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it took her years to get that perspective. It's not like that happened overnight, but it, it just like hit me where I was like, okay, whoa, perspective. Talk about someone who's like finally able to get to a place where, you know, she is, can live her life again and, you know, is able to kind of like forgive and let go of mm. horrible, horrible things. Yeah. So, wow. Again, extreme example, <laughs> you guys like, well, I mean, I think extreme examples are good though. I have a couple, I'm hesitant to share them. I also feel like we're out of time now, but maybe I will eventually, but 
I think extreme examples are good because honestly, and I don't know if you listeners ever feel this way, I'm sure you do, but like Mary and I try our best to not say all this lightheartedly, but like, we know that there are really hard examples out there in people's lives. And once again, like I've experienced some myself that I definitely will share them one day. I'm just not, they haven't fully processed yet Mm -hmm. because they're more recent that have happened, but there are things that are like really, really hard to see the silver lining and the, the bigger, like, like the wisdom and find the wisdom underneath such as the example you just shared. So I'm really glad you shared that because Mm -hmm. If any of the mind, and it's so easy for the minds, and of course I'm guilty of it sometimes. It's so easy for the minds to go into victim mm-hmm. and be like, well, no, my situation is just way too bad. And there's no fucking way that I can ever see this from a higher perspective. But that example right there is a really good example of how, like, there is a chance. There is, you know, if you open your heart and you open your mind, there is a chance. Not saying it's not going to be less painful or less shitty because for that woman, Amanda Knox, like, it's not to say that she's not still struggling internally and she doesn't still have a lot of pain that she carries from that experience, but she had a choice. She could let this ruin her and put her into a depression, a spiral, turning to alcohol, to food, to weed, to drugs, whatever it was, which a lot of people in life do do that. Or she could have chose the perspective that she is choosing now is I'm going to build a life for myself because I have the opportunity to do that. So using like the things like she's part of different organizations that help, like she gives a lot of empathy towards people that are in the criminal justice system. Wow. That's so cool. And yeah, it's like, again, it's like she used this terrible, terrible thing that happened to her and her roommate and like her friends and her friend group and is making it something that's more positive and bringing more light to the world. And again, like, I think like you said, Sarah earlier, like have grace with yourself. You guys, like, Mm -hmm. it's not like the day she got out of jail, she was like all happy and like spreading the sunshiny light of her. Like it's a fricking process. And some Mm -hmm. things are going to take more than others. Like something, some situation that like, I might be able to process really quickly might take a lot of time for Sarah and vice versa. Something that would really hang Sarah up might be something, you know, really easy for me to flow through or whatever. And that's okay. Like, we are are on our own paths. We are on our own journeys. And like, we are meant to work through the things that are put on our path. Yeah. And hopefully this episode is going to give you some ways that when those like rocks and sticks trip you up on your path, (laughs) you are able to, you know, still move forward with as much grace as you can, but it doesn't mean that we don't fall. It doesn't mean that we don't hurt ourselves along the way, Mm -hmm. but you know, you get to choose. Yep. And, and our power is in our pain. Our power is in our pain. I love that. Pain's a callus for growth. So oh, this was so good. Yeah. Mary, thank you for coming up with our topic idea once again. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy. Very happy. Mary is the greatest at coming up with topic ideas and titles. <laughs> Those are my two weak points. <laughs> we both have our strengths. So yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for listening in. Let us know if you love the show. Send us a DM on Instagram or post an R. Her Vibe is Pretty podcast Facebook group. Share your greatest takeaways. Share it with your friends. Send this episode to somebody who you feel needs it because that is how we change the world is by sharing the things that like light us up and make us feel like higher versions of ourselves. Sharing those with the ones we love can be super powerful and can change so many lives. So share with a friend and we will see you guys next week on the Her Vibe is Pretty podcast. Bye. Bye.